The first time I went down a straight here, I was absolutely scared stiff. I kept going faster and faster, and the road kept getting narrower and narrower. I had to back off the throttle and went back to the pits for a think. Those are the words of the only driver in history to win the Triple Crown. Graham Hill was speaking about racing at Spa, a venue which has always compelled those who can drive to prove it here. We continue that tradition right now. It's round 13 of the Formula One World Championship in 2023, and this is the circuit. Seven kilometers, 4.3 miles, and 44 laps ahead, around 19 turns, with evocative names and motor racing history everywhere you look. We go to Eau Rouge and Radion. First of all, it is Weber versus Alonso, and how about that for an overtake? Oh, you need a brilliant pair of drivers for a moment that special. This is Hakkinen versus Schumacher. Ricardo Zonta with an amazing view of arguably the greatest overtake of all time. We've just seen two phenomenal candidates at the top of the broadcast. And this was Ocon versus Ricardo versus Latifi, a brawl one year ago as the Alpine driver forced his way by. What a circuit it is for the drivers to tackle. And now we're in dry specification. It is the C4, the C3, and the C2 tires with questions about how long the soft tire can last and whether the fronts will grain because of the low temperatures we expect today. Live pictures of the grids. And you've got Hulkenberg changing components, so he's in the pit lane. Daniel Ricciardo is 19th, having had his time deleted in qualifying. Then you have Logan Sargent. Joe Guan Yu is P17. Kevin Magnussen got a three-place penalty for impeding. Alex Albon's going to be so quick in that first sector of the racetrack. Then it is Esteban Ocon in 14th, next to Valtteri Bottas, who is 13th on the grid. Pierre Gasly, P3 yesterday, his best result of the season so far in the sprint, next to Yuki Tsunoda, who's chasing a return to the points. Then it's uh, Aston Martin Rowe with Fernando Alonso ahead of Lance Stroll. We've got George Russell, who will be pleased to get to dry conditions. He's not enjoyed the mixed conditions. Lando Norris, seventh on the grid because he went off and damaged the floor. Max has happened down in P6 after taking that five-place grid penalty. And he is next to star of the weekend, Oscar Piastri. Then it signs next to Lewis Hamilton, who is a four-time winner here. Sergio Perez chasing. Another victory it would be his first at Spa if he does so. And he goes up against the man who scored his 20th pole position in Formula One, that is Charles Leclerc. Here come the lights, we've got four, five red lights in Spa, and the Belgian Grand Prix is go! That's a lock-up for Carlos Sainz, he's very close to being tipped into a spin there, and dropping back through the field is Piastri, the Red Bull pulling out of the slipstream, Sergio Perez going to the lead of the race! It's a little bit brave, I think, from Piastri, coming in on the inside here with Sainz, he's just pinched between the Mercedes and the McLaren, Sainz locks up and Piastri doesn't want to be sticking a nose in here. And Fernando Alonso pulls out of the slipstream, goes to the inside, that is slam dunk, that is fifth place. Big move Whoa! for Stroll on Norris. Stroll laid on the brakes. He's going to get done by Russell now. Russell will get to the apex first. And he's got the move to the inside at the final chicane, the limping Ferrari. Lando Norris pits them from 11th place and here goes Verstappen back. Verstappen to the inside of Lewis Hamilton who tried to close the door, but that Red Bull is rapid in the hands of the driver chasing eight Grand Prix wins in a row today. So let's see then. Charles Leclerc can offer no defence. It's a Red Bull 1-2. It's three tenths of a second between Albon in 11th and Sonoda. And here's the move. Here's the chance as Ocon making his way by Heath. And there's the move for Daniel Ricciardo. Hulkenberg's going to have a run at Alonso. These two had a bit of a fight yesterday. Around the outside goes Yuki Sonoda. The man who started in sixth position last year, he won here from 14th on the grid. Sixth today, and there will be nothing that Perez can do. Max Verstappen takes the lead of the Belgian Grand Prix. And this rain will last for around 10 minutes. We're on board with Max Verstappen. The rain is coming down. Are we about to see a big moment as he goes through? And that's how easy it is for your Grand Prix to end. Norris versus uh, Sargent. He's going to have to get it. He's going to have Around to get it. Around the outside. It's Yuki Tsunoda up against his old teammate, but it is Pierre Gasly being passed by the Japanese driver. Fastest lap for Max Verstappen. Is there a chance for a wheel down there? That would be brave if Gasly tries it. And Gasly will surely take the place if he can get on the power earlier. And he does so. 
Ocon had a good run. Whoa, he's feeling really brave. What a move that is from Esteban Ocon. This is a review of Esteban Ocon taking the place away from his good friend Lance Stroll. They get on very well. The Dutch driver will see the chequered flag first once again, and he celebrates across the line. Max Verstappen wins the Belgian Grand Prix, eight Grand Prix victories in a row, only the second time in the entire history of Formula One that that's happened. It will be a one-two. No one has an answer to Red Bull. The RB19 is well on its way to being the greatest Formula One car ever designed and Max Verstappen behind the wheel. Well, you can start him anywhere you like and he is fighting his way to the uh, front. Well, Max, congratulations, eight win in a row and you had to work for that one. How was it? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, in the beginning I had to be careful. You know, you could see in turn one there was a little uh, clash and uh, we just stayed out of trouble. And I think in the first and I was a bit unlucky. I got stuck in that DOS train with, with Lewis on, on Charles. But, um, as soon as uh, basically Lewis lost that DRS, I could pass, and um, yeah, from there on, was everything was fine. I think in the first thing it was just a bit tough because of following for such a long time. Your tires overheat, but as soon as we we put the second tire set on, we, we were flying. I mean, I felt really good on that medium. Of course, it was quite tricky with the, the rain falling at some points. So I had to be quite careful, even though I had a moment in in Arouche. Um, but yeah, from there onwards, everything went smooth. We went back to the soft tire, and um, yeah, once you're on clean air, it's uh, it's a lot easier. Yeah, it's good, you know, double podium. Uh, it was a shame what happened yesterday with Luis, but uh, I think today we managed to recover some good points and yeah, look forward massively for for the second half of the season. You know, I'm looking forward to a bit of a break. It feels good to be back on the podium and uh, obviously, especially for the last last uh, race of uh, the first part before the summer break. Um, it's been a positive weekend overall in terms of pace uh, from FP1 to, to the race and it was really important for me to uh, finish on a high note um, and, and we did so, so it's uh, good. It wasn't an easy race, uh, the rain was there in the second stint which uh, didn't make things easy um, but all in all we, uh, we had the perfect management of the race. Yesterday was a really horrible day um, so I didn't want to keep that kind of uh, you know, um, feeling into the summer break and in the end able to keep, keep, keep it all clean and um, keep it keep pretty all, all together especially just especially today so uh, yeah so um, I was happy uh, definitely and uh, ready, feeling ready for the also still second half of the season. Yeah I think obviously had a, a pretty good launch um, was yeah getting alongside Carlos and then um, yeah like with with his he kind of jinxed the inside a bit and obviously had to get out of the brakes to not get hit um, and then yeah my nose was kind of there and at that point, it was too late to, to try and back out. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately ended up in, in contact. But, um, yeah, shame to end so early.